G'day folks, today I've come cray fishing and the river is flooded. I'm cray fishing in a flooded river. Have a look at how high it is. Rightio folks, I wasn't expecting there to be this much water in the river. I had a hell of a job getting in here as you'll see shortly. Now I've bought four cray nets with me, but at the moment I've just set up two. I've set up the two with the longest strings. Now these two here, I remember from a uh, kayak fishing session recently, this one with the two hoops, that won't be used today because the rope just isn't long enough. This one here might be long enough and might not be. If I need to, I can cut some rope off that and make a third net. The, uh, the net with the short rope was earmarked to be thrown off that low bank down there, but the entire bank is under the flood water, so I can't use that anyway. So I'll be using at least two maybe three nets in this really really high dirty water and have a look at this i just had to walk through all of that flood water to get in i did not see that coming when i left home today <laughs> the river's almost flooded here's obstacle number one ah <sighs> too wet <laughs> too wet wade or not too wet wade now i've got my seal skin socks on down here coming up to about my knees I wonder if what if I pull my pants up I'll pull my tracksuit pants up over my knees all right there's a fashion statement I'm waterproof up to here I don't know how deep that is I've got a level of waterproofness, but is it enough? Let's find out. Now the next decision, do I go cautiously or do I just barge through and hope for the best? Holy shit. Uh oh, I don't think I'm gonna have enough. If it stays flat now, I'll be all right. That's too deep. Go fast, Robbie. Go hard or go home. Oh, look, there's a carp or something just there in the shallows. Right, I'm through. It did get up to here. You can see it got up here a bit. My feet, they should be okay. My toes are dry for now, but a little bit of water may get in under there. If it does, it'll only be a little bit, and my body heat should warm that water. I can feel it under my right heel now, actually. A little bit's got in here. But my body heat should warm that up now, provided no more cold water gets in, which won't be until I go home. the shape of this net would you this has uh, done a fair bit of work it's an hell of a mess now I'm doing something I've never done before here as you know I'm going to put my foot on my rope so that I don't uh, throw the whole net in but I'm throwing it out left-handed I'll tell you why because I always throw right-handed and I spin it that way and I frisbee it out but what it's done it's caused these uh, the ropes on these nets to be very very kink so by throwing it left-handed I'm hoping it'll spin the other way and just help unkink the nets a bit now with that uh, bit of current, that should be about four miles downstream by the time it hits the bottom. <laughs> Rightio, now net number two, as with net number one, he's getting the odd left-handed throw. Bit of anti-reverse, a bit of uh, anti-spin to try and help unkink my ropes. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, it's 1.22. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to do an impatient check. There's no point in me telling you that I'm going to be patient because that never happens. 122, I'll check these at 140. That'll be 18 minutes. And in that 18 minutes, I'm going to see if I can get net number three ready. Rightio, folks, I've made a third net. I just hope that the string's long enough. Have a look at this. It starts off with green cord, then goes to a different sort of green cord, then it goes to the yellow cord, and then there's another yellow cord. <laughs> And it still might not be long enough, so I'm hoping by putting it in down this end, 
it's not as deep down this end of the hole. I've ha had my deeper fish finder run through here and it's uh, up there where the other nets are is the deepest. Is it going to be long enough? The moment of truth. Still going. Still, uh, yes, it's on the bottom. Well, here's a little trick I picked up back in Nam. Put this stick in the ground. Then wrap me float around it. I like to have me floats wrapped around something. The others are just wrapped around tussocks of grass. Just in case the current grabs the slack and uh, pulls it too tight and pulls the float off the bank. All right, three nets in. 11. 129, I've still got 11 minutes. Rightio folks, you're not going to believe this. It's 141. I've actually gone over. I've gone 19 minutes. That is just unbelievable. Now I'm going to put my foot on my float now so that I don't forget when I go to throw it in. Where's the net? Ugh. Don't get snagged on the roots, you bastard. Well, there's nothing in it anyway. If there was, I'd probably lose it on that snag. I know, net, num net number two, as the sun comes out for the first time today, it doesn't feel very heavy, it feels like a snag now. But I got it up without too many issues. 1.45, I reckon I need to check them at 20 past one. That'll be 45 minutes, sorry, 20 past two. Give them 45 minutes. I've just decided that I'm, while I'm waiting for my noodles to cook, I'm going to do an impatient check on net number three because I didn't do it before. And also, I said, when it was 1.45, I said it would be 45 minutes. If I wait until 20 past two, that only makes it 35 minutes. So I'm gonna make it to half past two. Ugh. I might be attractive and good looking, but I'm not very good at maths. All right. Don't be snagged, don't be snagged. Ah, oh, look, it's way out in the open, beautiful. And uh, it's yielded a similar result to most impatient checks. Geez, those noodles were nice, but I reckon I might have some of that, the green stuff from them sachets, from the flavour sachets stuck in my teeth. Have I got anything stuck in my teeth? <laughs> Stop that, Robbie, or you'll be pissing milk. Oh, it feels heavy, it's something in here, I reckon. No. Nah. I don't think there's anything in this, it doesn't feel very heavy. Hmm, slow day on the craze. Right here, come on baby, come on baby. Don't let me down, don't let me down. I think it's going to let me down, it doesn't feel too heavy. Oh. <laughs> right here, it's time for a net check. 3.17, so it's been a bit over 45 minutes. I was going to give him an hour, but I just can't. I just, it's not in me, I can't do it. Gee whiz, the crayfishing is slow here. Doesn't feel very heavy at all. Nope. It doesn't feel heavy either. Not having much luck today. Right here, it's time to check the nets again. Got a good feeling this time. Because 45 minute intervals have been working so bad, it's been 45 minutes. Now, <laughs> I know what I've got to do to catch a crayfish. I've got it all sorted and this time I'm going to catch one. I'm going to leave everything here. I'm going to leave my phone here, my good camera here, and my tape measure here. Because if I'm unorganised, I'll catch one. Although well, this net's right at the same spot anyway, but the other nets are way up there. Usually that's the way. When you're unorganised is when you catch the most fish. This is the net that I had the highest expectations from, and I haven't seen a crane it. I thought I'd catch it. Oh, I haven't. Whoa! You call that a crayfish? <laughs> that is enormous! My god! Oh my god! Have a look at the size of that! That I've only caught one, but look at the size of it! The size of its claw, it's almost as big as my hand! Wow! I'm gonna go and get a measure. Gee, that's a big crayfish. My biggest ever is 135 from its side of its tail that I, that I know of. 
this one is nearly 140 140 140 from its eye to its tail let's put it next to a drink can for comparison or oh, I'll get a photo that's mad That is truly beautiful and look it's got no eggs either look but it's protected because it's oversize it's a spawner it's a breeder it's a stocker it's the stocker of the future's crayfish mate I could kiss you except I'd probably get me nose bitten off that is just absolutely amazing let's get some really cool release footage Well, it's taken me all afternoon just to catch one, but it was one big one. What an absolute buzz. <laughs> Rightio, if my audio is really bad, it's because I just had the camera underwater and there's probably water in the microphone. Didn't I tell you, all you have to do is leave all your tape measure and everything uh, behind, go out without them, then you're guaranteed to catch something. <laughs> and look, I've got another one. And once again, I haven't got my tape measure with me. This one might even be a legal one if it hasn't got eggs, which I think it has. I haven't been able to... Oh no, it hasn't. Yes, it has. Look. Look at all those beautiful eggs. Might even be the partner of the one that I just put back. What I'll do... I don't want to throw you her all the way down from up here while she's got eggs. So I'll put her there. I'll put the, uh, the net back. I'll come back over here to the... Uh, designated release spot <laughs> it's very 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 slippery I've got my feet in the water but remember I've got the seal skins on so that's okay see you later Jenny How lucky was I to catch that beautiful big giant crayfish? I feel truly blessed. Now, there's something I want to talk to you about. I'm not one to force my opinions on anyone. I see people keeping trout from streams or cod from rivers, things that I rarely, if ever, do. But I never grill because they're allowed to and that's fine. But there's something you're not allowed to do and that's keep an oversized crayfish. And I'm going to tell you why. Those two that I just caught were most likely a pigeon pair. A male and a female. The female had eggs. They might have been the father, that might have been the father of those eggs. There's every possible chance in a waterway this size, it's not overly huge, that they could have been the pair responsible for stocking this area. Now, by taking that big male out, I would get one or two minutes of bliss on my tongue and it would be gone from the river here forever. And it would never impregnate any other crayfish. It would never be able to breed. And those two crays, they are the future of the river. They are the hatchery. They're the scientists. They're, they're the research team. They are the stockists of the waterway. And it's absolutely critical that we do the right thing and put them back. And you know what? If we do do the right thing and put the big ones back and let them breed up, we will be able to catch legal sized crayfish forever. We've got a slot limit from 10 to 12 centimeters carapace length. And if you put them back, eventually you'll catch a legal cray that you can go and enjoy without feeling guilty. So folks, just a lecture from me. If you catch a big one, it's so important that you put them back, let them breed, so that my kids, your kids, and our grandkids can come down here for decades, decades to come and enjoy doing what I'm doing right now. Rightio folks, it is five past five, so it's been an hour and five minutes. This is the longest stint they've had. It's also the last time I'm pulling them out now. All I'm going to take with me is a knife. 
I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna take a tape measure or a camera of any kind because when I do, that's when I don't catch anything. Now this is the only net that hasn't caught a cray today. Is it still crayless? Yep. This is this has had a a crayfish free day. But this is the net that caught that giant crayfish before. Doesn't feel very heavy. I don't think there's anything in it to be honest. No. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> Righto, last net. Has it got a quay fish in it? No. <laughs> How is that? How does that work? I've been here all afternoon. I've been here from 12 o'clock to I've been here for five hours. And I've only caught two crayfish. They were two monsters and I got them in two successive lifts of the net. I caught them both at the same time. Isn't that amazing? Folks, today has certainly been quality over quantity. But I've had a lot of fun and just, even if I knew I was only going to catch one big one, that big monster, I still would have come out. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It wasn't action packed, but what a whopper. If you've liked this video, why not subscribe to this channel so that when I upload new videos, you get a notification. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video.